Parshas Miketz and the story of Yosef always fall out around Hanukkah. And this is not coincidental. The commentators discuss Yosef's connection to Hanukkah at great length. Now an obvious connection between Yosef and the Greeks is their association with beauty. Yosef is the only male in the Torah who is referred to as beautiful, and the Greeks originate from Yephes, whose name literally means beauty. In a similar vein, the Gemara states that despite the general prohibition of translating the Torah into other languages, it's permissible to translate the Torah into Greek due to the beauty of the language. So what's the meaning behind this connection between Yosef and the Greeks? Additionally, in Parshas Noach, Noach blesses his two sons as follows, Yaft Elohim Yafes v'yishkon bo leshem. Hashem will grant beauty to Yafes and he will dwell within the tents of shame. Yafes is the ancestor of the Greeks and shame is the ancestor of the Jews. This seemingly paints the Greeks as a positive force, as a beautiful nation, fitting to dwell within the framework and boundaries of Judaism. However, the Hanukkah story and other incidents throughout Jewish history reveal a very negative and harmful relationship between the Jews and the Greeks. What then is the meaning behind the Torah's positive portrayal of the Greeks and what's the meaning behind their beauty? So in order to understand why both Yosef and the Greeks are referred to as beautiful and the powerful connection between them, we have to understand the spiritual concept of beauty in all its depth. And to do so, we have to trace the spiritual concept of beauty back to the creation of man before Adam Harishon sinned. Before Adam sinned, he looked nothing like you or I do today. When we look at each other, all we see is flesh and bone. But if you looked at Adam before he sinned, his appearance was angelic, transcendent, luminescent. The Midrash says that he wore kusnas or skin of light. When you looked at Adam, you didn't see his body, you saw Adam himself, his neshama, his soul. When you look at a light bulb, all you see is radiant luminescence. Only if you look very closely can you just make out the surface of the bulb. And the same was true regarding Adam. Only if you looked very closely could you just make out his physical body. His body was transparent with the outside loyally and fully reflecting his inner self. And this is true beauty. Where the inner and outer melt into a oneness, where the physical perfectly reflects the inner spirituality where the physical projects something much deeper than itself. Beauty is the harmony and synthesis of different components, resulting in something infinitely greater than the sum of its parts. And when Adam sinned, however, the world fell and Adam's body fell as well. The physical no longer revealed the spiritual, but hid it. And now, when we look at each other, we don't see our true selves. All we see is a physical body. What was once light is now darkness. People can't see your inner world, your thoughts, your consciousness, your emotions, your soul. All they see is your external body. Now, in order to reveal yourself to other people, you have to actively use the physical to reveal the spiritual. Only through your words, actions, facial expressions, and body language can people get a glimpse into who you truly are. The body used to be incandescent and reveal. Now, it only hides. It's up to us to reveal. And after the sin of Adam HaRishon, genuine beauty became elusive. Sari Menu, however, was one of the few who still achieved this lofty feat. We know Sari was physically beautiful, that her beauty wasn't just an ethereal spiritual nature, because when Sari and Avram descended to Mitzrayim, to Egypt, the Egyptians and even Paro himself desired her. And the Egyptians were steeped in immorality, interested only in beauty that ran skin deep. However, we also know that Sarah was immensely spiritual as well, that she reached the loftiest of spiritual levels. And at the end of Parshas Noach, Rashi explains that one of Sarah's other names was Yiska. A name always reflects essence, so we have to understand the meaning of this name and what it reveals about Sari Menu. Yiska means transparent, and Sarah's true beauty lay in her transparency. Her inner beauty completely permeated and was loyally reflected through her physical body. Genuine beauty requires the need of the character trait of transparency, where the physical body reflects the inner and spiritual beauty, something infinitely greater than any external beauty. True beauty is oneness, where the physical and spiritual melt into a oneness, where the physical doesn't hide the inner self but reveals it. And one of the most misunderstood ideas in Judaism is the concept of tznius, modesty, especially in regards to women. Many think that tznius means to hide, that the ideal is not to be seen. 
However, there's an infinitely deeper approach to modesty. In this age, beauty has been corrupted. The term beauty generally refers to our beauty, a surface beauty that distracts from and hides the inner self. Physical beauty, though, is neither good nor bad. It's merely a vessel that has the potential to be used for good or bad. While the physical exterior is important, our true self is our neshama, our mind and consciousness. Our inner world thoughts, ideas, choices, beliefs, mitos, and emotions are the deepest and most genuine parts of our self. True beauty is when the physical serves as a vessel that expresses one's true self, their inner essence, out into the world. And the focus has to always be on the inner beauty as the ichor, as the essence. The purpose of sneas, of modesty, is not to hide you, but to reveal you, the true you. Modesty shifts the focus from the external trappings to the actual self, the neshama, which lies beneath the surface and illuminates the physical vessel. True beauty requires a beautiful root and core, and the physical has to be used to project that inner beauty outwards. And this was the Hanukkah battle. The conception of beauty was a fundamental point of contention in the battle between the Jewish people and the Greeks. The Greeks did not believe in using the physical to reflect anything higher. They viewed physical beauty as an end unto itself, and their focus was solely on the external. To them, beauty was physical perfection, detached from anything deeper, from anything spiritual. The Greeks introduced the Olympic Games, competition that idolizes the physical body. For the Greeks, true godliness was physical and intellectual perfection, albeit completely detached from each other. The physical and intellectual were completely independent. Mind and soul did not permeate the physical, but remained distinct and separate. And this is why the Greeks come from Yephes, which means beauty, and why their language is referred to as beautiful. Ideally, the Greeks could have reflected true beauty, a perfect harmony and oneness between physical and spiritual beauty. And this is the ideal that Noah hoped for when he said, Hashem will grant beauty to Yephes and he will dwell within the tents of shame. Ideally, the Greeks would have harmonized with the Jews, joining the physical with the spiritual. Instead, they chose to corrupt true beauty, disconnecting the spiritual from the physical and projecting the physical as an independent and in itself. And Yosef is connected to Hanukkah because he represents the harmony between the physical and the spiritual. He successfully utilized the physical to reflect something higher. The Torah calls him beautiful because his physical body projected something infinitely deeper than itself. And this is the profound meaning behind the name that Paro gives Yosef, Tzafnas Paneach, which means to reveal the hidden. A name reflects inner essence. And Yosef's Midah, his attribute, was true beauty, the ability to harmonize the physical with the spiritual, the hidden with the revealed. Yosef represents our victory over Greek ideology, the ability to hold on and stay true to a life of Torah, to see the physical as a reflection of something infinitely deeper than itself. And the Greeks attacked Yerushalayim, trying to disconnect us from the base Hamikdash, the temple, the place where Hashem most deeply and intimately connects with the physical world. The place of the base Hamikdash is referred to as Tzion, a unique, beautiful, and distinguished place. The Pasuk in Tehillim refers to Tzion as the place of ultimate beauty. Mitzion Mechlal Yofi, from Tzion comes the embodiment of beauty. The Gemara explains that all of the world's beauty was given to Tzion, and it gave a tenth of its portion, Miser, to the rest of the world. The spiritual concept of beauty is identified with Tzion. And Yavan represents external surface beauty, while Tzion represents true beauty. Yavan is comprised of the letters Yud, Vav, Nun, while Tzion is comprised of those same three letters along with a Tzadi in front, the same root and Shoresh of the word Tzadik. Yosef is referred to as Yosef HaTzadik because he places the Tzadi in front of Yavan, turning surface beauty into Tzion, true beauty. Yosef represents the ability to shine inner higher beauty through a physical medium. So it's no coincidence that the gematria, the numerical value of Tzion, is 156, the same gematria as Yosef. And this is the hidden light of Hanukkah, the light that illuminates the truth, helping us see that which lies beneath the surface. Beauty is much deeper than a description of how a person looks. It's a way of life. 
a beautiful life is a life of oneness, where we synthesize all the aspects of who we are, where our thoughts, words, and actions all reflect a higher purpose, a higher source, a higher reality. This is the beauty of Yosef, and this is the light of Hanukkah.